fucked up. Belichick's lost a, lost a step to I'm me. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. This is Annex Squared. Week 12 is upon us in the National Football League. It is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Welcome to Annex Squared. Jason Annex, my identical twin brother, John Annex, joining me from New York. So I have to say, anticipation is often greater than the actual event. So I'm starting to think my favorite day is actually the Wednesday before Thanksgiving rather than actually Thanksgiving because I'm so excited. I get so excited about tomorrow. I get so excited to eat and watch football that I actually wonder if tomorrow actually pales in comparison to the excitement I feel now. What's well, up? it's interesting. There are a lot of people in Canada and England who love the NFL and don't celebrate the American Thanksgiving. So imagine what that day is like for them. You get to wake up and watch the NFL all day. I'd imagine a lot of these Canadians take the day off and celebrate football because a lot of them are rabid NFL fans. So I think it would be a cool experience as a non-American to ingest what our Thanksgiving holds because for me, it's all about football. I mean, certainly I like turkey more than the average bear. Everybody banging on turkey this time of year. Fucking love turkey. Yeah, right? Stuffing. I like the canned yeah. cranberry sauce. I'm sorry to all the uh, grandmothers and grandfathers who go to great lengths to make this cranberry sauce, but it's Thanksgiving Eve. I'm in White Plains, New York. I was just in New York City for uh, for a couple of days. We saw the Rockettes at Radio City Music Hall with the children, and uh, can't tell you, as much as I love New York City, and our producer, Cody Merrow, just thinks that I bang on New York City all the time. As much as I love New York City, Cody, I love New York City. Nice to be out here in the Burbs and White Plains to just chill a little bit and get away from uh, from the noise. From the hustle and bustle. I'm going to stay on Turkey for a second. So you know that kind of well-documented, We've when we do it at our house, we actually substitute chicken for turkey, right? Now, I know everyone thinks this is nuts, right? And I'm not just saying like your average rotisserie chicken from the market, you know, All right? My wife can cook a whole chicken and multiple whole chickens. But this year, you're going to like this, John. So we got a couple whole chickens, and then I got some wings, too. So we're going to marinate all the wings, wow. brine all the wings. So it's going to be whole chickens, chicken wings with all the Thanksgiving fixings. You got to let more moist, more delicious. No? No, Every I day agree with that. I can get behind chicken, but you said we, and I think some people might be watching this show. And by the way, great to have you with us. Week 12, Anna Square, presented by DraftKings, in association with Toyo Tires. Very excited to be here on the East Coast. But you say we, in the Northeast, Northeast I should say, but you say we as if it's like me and you under the same roof. So you and your immediate family, you go chicken. I am not with you guys this year for the first time in a long time. So I'll be up here presumably eating turkey, but I do hope at, at some point in time to have Amanda's chicken on Thanksgiving because despite the fact that I used to maybe be in your immediate family, right? I've never had Amanda's chicken on Thanksgiving. So I intend to monopolize your time a little more today uh, because you're up in New York. You know, certainly disappointed that you're not going to be at my residence tomorrow. And I have to say, like, and, and full disclosure, like my entertainment value tomorrow, right? Probably goes from like a, like a 10, right? But you not being there, what, like maybe an eight and a half? No disrespect to everybody else. But for me, right? What Do you agree with that? What you're looking like it should go lower than eight and a half with you not there for me? With total respect, I know what I bring to the table in terms of your overall entertainment and enjoyment of the <laughs> experience. I'm, I'm trying to answer this objectively, but the notion that mom and Dave and everybody else doesn't go down to like a, a six and a half is just not speaking to our listenership with complete well, veracity. I was going to go seven originally, but then I thought that was a little too disrespectful. Respectful, So I felt like eight and a half was a good score. Um, but I've said this before on Annex Squared. A lot of time, our family much prefers to have one of us. When, when it's the two of us, yes. oftentimes it's a little bit of a shit show, for lack of a better way to put it. But anyway, go One ahead. more thing. I do tell my kids, though, the truth will set you free. And oftentimes it's harder to lie, as you just did with that eight and a half, than it is to just speak with complete <laughs> truthfulness. That's all. <clears throat> all right. We're going to talk football here as we do each week on Annex Squared. And quickly, for those of you joining us for the first time, we pick five games against the spread in the NFL. We go head-to-head -head against each other. Our ultimate goal being to nail down our five selections for the Westgate Super Contest, where the winner takes home a million dollars. So I have to say, this week was an interesting week. Up and down week for us. I, you know, I, I guess that's why our first segment is always appropriately called Tire and Ice. Let's get right to it. So football fans, as the upcoming season continues to unfold with uncertainty, there's no playbook for fans, players, or coaches. 
Navigating this uncharted territory requires focus on safety above all else. So when it comes to ensuring a smooth journey, whether it's on the way to meet family for Thanksgiving or anywhere else, no better route than a quick slant to Toyo Tires. Whether you're tackling the rugged mountains of Denver or cruising the streets of LA, Toyo Tires has you covered. With options like their open country tires for challenging terrains or the sleek Celsius sports for city driving, you can ride with confidence and zero regrets backed by their 500 mile or 45 day trial. This winter, embrace the freedom of the open road. Visit toyotires.com to locate a dealer near you. Toyo Tires, open roads await. So, you know, I said up and down a little bit and, you know, we did very well on Annex Squared last week, week, right? Combined seven and three. And, and then unfortunately, I guess to break the news, we go one, three and one in the contest. And it reminds me a little bit, you and Kenny Florian, I believe we're talking about it on the Anakin Florian podcast, either this week or last about fighters sort of maybe some of them being better in training than on fight night. And this was sort of a week where I feel like we were maybe better in training than on fight night. And yeah. So, so I say, so I say, you know, we go seven and three in Annex Square. And I'll just quickly get to each of our five picks and then we'll talk about the contest. So your five picks, good week for you, son. Four and one, you get the Cowboys minus 10 and a half. 49ers minus 11 and a half. Chiefs minus two and a half was your loss. Giants plus nine and a half. They win the game outright at Commanders. Packers plus three, win the game at home. Very good week. You were four and oh going into that big Monday night game. So you're th- so you are now four games over 500, 29 and a half and 25 and a half. You're seven games over 500 over your last four weeks. So you've certainly flipped the script a little bit in terms of your head-to-head picks. I don't want to be, go on and on here, but there are a lot of different components picking games on Annex Squared. You've alluded to the fact certain weeks there's only 13 games on the board. We can only be – we have to pick 10 games because we cannot be on the same side. So good stretch for you. Any of those five you want to touch on before I talk about my five? Giants plus nine and a half felt like easy money. Felt pretty good about that one all week. Didn't have a lot of sweats overall. The 49ers kept giving the ball back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that one we had to sweat a little bit, but overall felt good about those big favorites. And the game that we were collectively most convicted on was the Dallas Cowboys minus ten and a half. And that one really required min- minimal schwitzing on both of our ends. So it was nice to sort of begin the week with that, our biggest play. And I will also say to the to the viewership, my biggest play comes Sunday at 12.55 p.m. Eastern time was Raiders plus 14 at Miami. And I know you disagree with that every step of the way, but gosh, that felt like easy money, you know? It just you did. mentioned it on no, you mentioned it on Annex Squared last week. And and I say this was one of those weeks where the joints component really got us like sometimes that isn't a good thing do you know what i mean where you saw the board well i saw the board well and then collectively it wasn't good but let me quickly get to my three and two and i have to tell you so so i go three and two i'm now 32 and a half and 22 and a half 10 games over 500 i go three and two for the second consecutive week but my go ahead 10 games over 500 how many games am i back and how much time i have through the super bowl to to make this up or no? When does this end? Through wild card weekend? I'm only three games back. Okay. Yep. Three games back. You picked up a game because I went three and two. But I just want to mention, it's the second straight week I went three and two. Second straight week where the five I came with went four and one. I understand the format, the alternate selections. But so for me, so we we gave the audience last week seven out of 10. One was an alternate. So really it's eight out of 10. But then a very fucking unfortunate, excuse my language, we end up at one and a one and a half. Three and a half in the contest. One, three, and one in the contest. Let me get to that if you don't mind. Yeah, so please. our one our one hit, Cowboys. You know what? I skipped over my my five. Let me just go there real quick. So Jaguars minus six and a half. Easy money. Bills minus seven versus the Jets. Easy money. Oh, and those gosh. were two I had wish we had brought into the contest. You didn't like those sides as much as I did. I did bring get the Texans home minus four as well. That was five into the contest. Bengals plus four Thursday night was my alternate selection, and I lost the Cowboy, the Dolphins minus 12. Whatever, fuck week eleven. So, but but the ah. but the contest, the contest picks. Okay, so the Texans minus five in the contest was a push for us. Ah. I had it minus four in in on Annex Square. So that went to five. That was a push. That was certainly yeah. Go ahead. I, I guess some points left on the, the board. For CJ. You were on the air, Anthony Pettis fighting championship as this was going on. I'm having a hard time handicapping the Houston Texans as we look ahead to week 12 as I sort of marinate and digest this result. 
C.J. Stroud had a lot of opportunities, as did this Houston offense collectively, for us to cover this number. And gosh, if there weren't a lot of Sharps who were on Arizona and loving Arizona, money line sprinkle, all this business. And I felt like Houston was the sharp side. Yes, the show is called Annex Squared. I have some square tendencies. But I felt like the Houston Texans were the sharp side. I felt like we deserved to get that game home. So many turnovers in that other side of the field for Houston. And maybe it's just... uh you know, things equaling out after an otherworldly rookie year for C.J. Stroud. But, man, it felt like we were on the right side. Yeah, and it feels as though in the Super Contest, a tie is as good as a loss. So that push felt like a loss. Yeah. And then we played the, the Lions minus seven and a half. And they they had no business winning, frankly, or, or covering, and they didn't cover. But what frustrated me is we end up on the Lions minus seven and a half because I can't sell you on either the Jaguars minus six and a half at home to the Titans or the Bills minus seven versus the Jets at home, right? So those were the two games close to touchdown favorites that I liked, but because you don't like it, we end up moving off to some, and then covering a bigger number. So that was obviously a rough one. Cowboys minus 10 and a half. We brought in, as you alluded to that hits Broncos minus two and a half. They don't get the two point conversion at the end. They win the game at home by one versus the Vikings. I liked, we were on the right side there, but, but so that was obviously a loss. And then chiefs minus two and a half. You can do better than going against the Eagles. They have one loss in the whole season. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And they've won four in a row. We had a great chance to be three, one, and one. Not our greatest submission in terms of the five that we submitted for the Super Contest, but uh, but we're on to week 12 and very excited at the board and uh, a lot of options, and it all begins tomorrow morning. So in terms of the Super Contest, if for those of you who don't know, so it's week 11. So in weeks eight and nine, we went five and oh both weeks. And then we sort of stumbled a two, two, and one, and a one, three, and one. So when you go from five and oh back to back weeks, and then you're only putting a, you know, four points on the board over the next two weeks, it's just not good enough. So in this super contest, the winner gets a million dollars. The loser, the loser, if you make every pick a lot, and you can't just not make picks, but if you pick every pick you're supposed to, and you are the final, the biggest loser, you get a hundred thousand dollars. So anyway, we hit seven of 10 on the show, go one and a half. And I say, yeah, one, three and one, one and a half and three and a half in the contest. So we are now at 30, 23 and two. That's just okay. It's like a B. It's not even like a B plus. You need to be a plus plus to win this thing. So let's get to the leader automatic O T T O Matic. He is 40, 14 and one 40 and a half points. Three and two last week, you know, 40, 14 and one isn't very good. I'm not, no disrespect, but not totally otherworldly. I feel as though this contest through 11 weeks, there've been more than 40 points at certain stretches. So, um, but I have to say, there's a lot of these mid-season tournament, a lot of these guys like this guy automatic, he's banked 50 grand. He's going to bank another 50. These in-season tournaments. If you're leading this whole thing, you can be sure you have stretches yeah. where you bank some money in these in-season tournaments. So we're at 31 points. So we're nine and a half points back, but you know, two weeks ago, we're at 27 points. Just not good enough after one, three and one. You said this ruined your trip in New York or was ruining it a little bit. It just ruined like 16 hours of my trip, but then it was all systems go. Once I saw the Rockettes, the Rockettes, excuse me. Once we were at Radio City Music Hall, we were fine. But yeah, man, it just felt like we could have gotten the Chiefs and the Broncos home and we got neither home, but it is what it is. I wanted to point to one quick thing and then I'll let you do all your business, right? Look ahead lines. We don't always mention these and a lot of sports books don't necessarily offer these, right? DraftKings Sportsbook application not available where we live in South Florida right now. So I can't be betting week 12 with my local guy in week 10, right? But we mentioned these Thanksgiving Day games and the Black Friday game last week in week 11 here on Annex Squared. Packers plus seven and a half at the Detroit Lions. The line remains the same. But these other numbers have gone crazy. Commanders plus nine and a half at the Cowboys, right? We mentioned a play on Dallas minus nine and a half last week. It's 12 and a half right now. Dallas minus nine and a half ticket probably looks pretty good. 49ers minus three and a half at the Seahawks. That number is now seven and a half. Geno Smith, I'm not sure if he's questionable, but he isn't healthier. He isn't 100%. And then Black Friday, Dolphins minus six at the Jets. That number is now 10. So if you have DraftKings Sportsbook, as most of our viewership does, take advantage if uh, if you think that look-ahead number looks good and is under or above a key number. I love it. Good stuff. Quickly. Got to get to the guy in the basement. We can't forget about the doctor, Chuck A. Fox, MD. He is the leader of the basement of the Super Contest on his way to $100,000, but he only has a half a game lead. He went 2-2-1 two, two, and one last week. So so the doctor had a better week than he would have liked. He is 16-36-3 against the spread, 17.5 points overall. Let's get to the picks. 
Thanksgiving is upon us, and for NFL fans like us, Turkey Day is just as good as a regular season NFL Sunday. Three games back to back to back. What is it they say? Food, family, football. We at Annex Squared are here to elevate your game, and to that end, we are happy to announce our partnership with our title sponsor, the ultimate game changer, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official partner of the National Football League. DK Sportsbook is excited to bring all new customers an easy way to join in on the action right now in time for the Thanksgiving weekend. All customers download the DraftKings app, use our promo code SQUARED, that's S-Q-U-A-R-E-D, bet just $5 and boom, $200 in bonus bets, hit your account instantly. So don't wait, get some skin in the game and download the DraftKings app now. Also, stay in on the action. Use that $200 in bonus bets on DraftKings Same Game Parlays. Combine multiple bets together from the same game for a shot at an even bigger payout. And if sports betting not yet available in your state, don't worry about it. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the shot to win cash prizes. So what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Sign up using promo code SQUARED. Get your game face on. Five bucks on any bet. And watch as $200 in bonus bets instantly light up your screen. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. All right, as a refresher, each week on Annex Squared, you're always chomping at the bit when I'm talking, but each week on Annex Squared, we will pick five games against the spread and go head-to-head against each other. Ultimate goal being for us to narrow down our five selections for the Westgate Las Vegas Super Contest. One rule to keep in mind, we cannot be on the same side. For example, if I'm on the Patriots, minus three, and John wants to be on the Patriots, he cannot. He can go on the other side, but he needs to find an alternate selection Control of the board remains in your hand. You can either select the first pick or picks two and three, and then we go from there. Chost, what do we got? I'm going to make the first selection. Were I to be on the New England Patriots, I would be glad I put my bet in yesterday because right now it's New England minus three and a half at the New York Giants on DraftKings Sportsbook. But I will pick first and then defer to you for a couple. Black Friday will no be bye my weeks. selection. No bye weeks this week. Thanks for letting everybody know. There were definitely more games on the board. Perhaps that's why I'm a little bit more convicted this week. So it'll be Black Friday for my first selection, folks. So you know which way I'm going. You know I'm not laying 10 with the Miami Dolphins. I mean, come on! Jets plus 10. All right, here's the Jets QB depth chart. You ready? Tim Boyle, QB1. Trevor Simeon. I couldn't have named him. Two. Trevor Simeon is QB2. And Zach Wilson, clipboard QB3. I think the Jets defense, they'll bounce back here after that drubbing against the Buffalo Bills. So Tim Boyle may actually be worse than Zach Wilson and more on Bailey Zappi and Will Greer in a few minutes, right? But I don't know if Boyle is worse than Zach Wilson. This space actually says he's going to be a slight upgrade in terms of just the decision making (laughs) and risk management and overall confidence. Dolphins injury report does factor into this play for me, and it is also a short week. But you're catching 10 points here in division, Jay. You know the Jets and Dolphins play a lot of close games. New York Jets, fairly convictedly for me, actually, on the Black Friday. I think it's a 3 p.m. Eastern start or something. Weird circumstance. I think maybe speaks to an under here. I like the uh, the New York Jets plus 10 to begin my card for week number 12. Yeah, I don't. My Ah. first selection, week 12. Sunday night. Purple, baby. Ravens minus three and a half at the Chargers. Little extra time for the best team in football to get ready after winning last Thursday at home against Cincinnati. So they're eight and three, a bye week next week for the Ravens. Do I like the number three and a half on the road? I don't, but I would love it at three. Would love it. So am I going to let a half a point dictate it? I love fading Brandon Staley and the Chargers at this stretch of the season. The schedule makers always think this team is going to be good and in it. You know what I mean? This game probably looked great on paper. No, what, four and six. Um, Joey Bosa out with a sprained foot, and it feels like he's the engine of that whole locker room, not necessarily just the defense. You know, they could only muster 20 points last week at, at, at Green Bay, and it's like they're not going anywhere. Like at receiver, it's Keenan Allen and who? Who, who else we got there? Um, Ravens without Mark Andrews, who I, I understand, but I don't really think that's insurmountable. If the Chiefs lost Travis Kelsey, it feels like he's sort of a bigger – I hate to say Mark Andrews isn't a big part of the Ravens' offense. There are just so many weapons there. Um, the Chargers are giving up almost 400 yards a game. That is second worst in the entire league. Baltimore can surely D up. I expect them to give Herbert some problems here. Ravens flock. Baltimore minus 3.5 at Chargers Sunday night. Selection one for me. 
Strong disagreement on your Mark Andrews take. I think the Mark Andrews loss is actually bigger than the Joey Bosa loss on the other side for the L.A. Chargers. And had that number stayed at four, I probably would have been on the Chargers plus four. But I don't know exactly what that Mark Andrews injury is going to mean, at least for the Baltimore offense for this week. So that's the only thing that really gives me great pause on your Ravens selection. Would you like to offer up another player or are you uh, give me back control? Ooh, I like it. I forgot the format. Not going to lie. My second selection, Denver Broncos minus one and a half versus the Browns. I like looking at you when I make pick. Oh, he's laughing. So he's certainly not on that side. Head coach quarterback, Russell Wilson, Sean Payton. They've righted the ship. Winners of four straight. They go from one and five to five and five. That is hard to do in the National Football League. Um, And they're absolutely in the mix. Russell Wilson on the year, 19 touchdowns, four picks, 69% completions, Quarterback rating 104.3. His last interception was the last time they lost. That was week six against the Chiefs. They've beaten the Chiefs, the Bills, and the Vikings with a bye mixed in. I'm just impressed. I understand what the Browns bring defensively. The Browns have won three straight, two at seven and three, but only scored 13 points last week. No disrespect, but Dorian Thompson-Robinson, he's a backup. It's like a Gardner Minshew situation. Not very accurate, these guys. I just like the home team with Mojo. I think Denver does have a home field advantage, probably more so this week than ever. Sometimes Thanksgiving weekend, I lean toward the road team, you know, the home team eh, sort of settling in. They're off Thursday, not sort of a normal week, but not here. I like the home team. I'll lay the small number at home. Broncos minus one and a half. Broncos country. Let's ride. Oh, let's ride. (laughs) So I'd love to see you do the let's ride, by the way, with your uh, broadcasting experience of a few takes. So. It would be foolish of me to offer up the Browns right here if they were in my five, right? Strategically. Right. So you all know I'm a sucker for the Buffalo Bills, and we're coming right back with them. Buffalo plus three and a half at Philadelphia. This was three. Now three and a half pushes me through the key number and to the window with the underdog Buffalo Bills. Short week for the Eagles, right? Following that emotional road win at Arrowhead. Right, Jay, huh? I still think the Bills' best football is ahead of them, right? I mean, you are probably right in totality about Sean McDermott, and kudos to you for, again, sort of being ahead of the curve when it comes to some of these guys. I'm not suggesting that uh, he is going to get fired or he can't get this team to the Super Bowl, but I think it's been an underachieving half a decade for the Buffalo Bills relative to expectation, or at least the last two or three years, and Patrick Mahomes has a lot to do with that. Um but right now, the Buffalo Bills, the eighth seed in the AFC, six and five on the season. How about the next three weeks, Jay, schedule wise for the Buffalo Bills? At Philadelphia, at Kansas City, you went through this, and then home to the Cowboys. They could be the betting underdog in all three of those spots. Which game do I like them the most in? Maybe this one. I think they ride the momentum gain from that win over the Jets, 32 to six. I think the Bills might win this one outright at the very least. I think it's a field goal game. Bills plus three and a half at the Eagles in week 12. And then, I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Please. I know you got another selection, but I just want to ask you, you know, so you have the fattest ticket of your life on the Eagles, you know, to, to win the NFC, you know, whatever that may be. And plus so I feel like we're getting a little bit plus 340. Yeah, plus 340. So I feel like we're getting a little bit of a happiness hedge here the past couple of weeks with the, playing the Chiefs last week. Now we're going against the Eagles again this week because I liked Buffalo there too, but I'm not, I'm not playing against Jalen Hurts anymore. I'm, th- it's not happening. Anyway, well, we proceed. Three went to three and a half. I have been getting destroyed on these Stefan Diggs props, right? We share an account, so you understand, <laughs> right? Just getting absolutely destroyed because I don't know if it's happening in my dreams, this guy putting up a 200-yard game. I don't know what's going on. I just feel like I have a game of 180 yards or more, but it's certainly not happening. That is not a hedge for the record. I was going to check what the uh, what the price right now is on the Philadelphia Eagles to win the NFC. But no, I mean, I feel like inevitably I'm going to have some huge 49ers or Lions ticket as a partial hedge come January. Yep. But the, the Eagles are putting that ticket in great position with the way they have uh, have played. Or great ha- point. Great point. The way, they, the way they have won, right, because they still aren't in complete form and neither are the chiefs at all. The chiefs are not playing particularly good, but, but, but with the format in the NFL postseason, if you can have that ticket on the Eagles with that singular buy, it just, they're, they're going to be favored. They would be favored even at home against the 49ers. Yeah. albeit slightly, I would say. All right. So next selection for me. So the new England Patriots are three and a half point favorites in 2000. Say it again. Favorites. They're favorites. Fav- and I wish we had that graphic. They lost last week to the bye. There was that. That was a yeah, funny meme out there. Cody, yeah. Cody, yeah. 
All right. So the Patriots off the bye week. Certainly Bill Belichick extra time to prepare for Tommy DeVito and company. We have seen some line movement. G-men were plus three, now plus three and a half. And again, that pushed me to the window for sure. So I know the Patriots well. That doesn't mean I'm always on the right side. I've been rooting for them, though, since 1982. We still do not know who is their starting quarterback. Could be Mac Jones. One thing I can tell you, I can't tell you Tim Boyle versus Zach Wilson, but I can tell this audience unequivocally, as below average as Mac Jones is, Bailey Zappi is worse. I promise you that. With total (laughs) respect, Bailey Zappi is 1,000% a worse option than Mac Jones. Will Greer Uh, and Malik Cunningham, I don't know, but with total respect and admiration for the professional athlete that is Bailey Zappi, he's worse than Mac Jones, and that's really a critical, critical state. So Saquon Barkley (laughs) is starting a tailback. For the Giants, right? TB1, Saquon Barkley, 140 all-purpose yards last week, playing motivated, playing hard, healthy, looked like the best athlete on the field. I don't know. Perhaps you get some hugely complete, clean effort out of the New England Patriots. They get healthy off the bye week. That is not my expectation. Giants defense going to show up here. I think they keep it close at the very least, right? Giants plus three and a half for me in week 12. I like it. Yeah, right. I get it. Our producer, Cody, said biggest game for the Patriots all season. Need a loss. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I agree. I, but honestly, at this point, I don't, I'm, you know, it's a, to me, I don't have a lot of faith in who's picking picking the players, sort of whether, whether you get the first pick, sixth pick, whatever it is. As long as Belichick isn't making that selection, I think they'll be all right. Get Lewis Riddick in there to be the general manager of the New England Patriots. Get Lewis Riddick. Ger- Gerard Mayo can coach the team. But talk about bringing v- Vrabel in. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, you know what? We're going to get Lewis Riddick on Annex Squared this season. And. Oh. Oh, no, we'll get him on the show. Maybe he won't be able to talk about that. He won't be able to talk about that. Well, what am I going to pre-interview him and say, hey, is it okay if we. Well, no, No, maybe just saying no before. Sometimes I get pre-screened before I interview with someone and I'll say it's up to me not to perjure myself. You can literally ask me anything. Right. People will ask me oftentimes. Right. One out of every two interviews. Is there anything that's off limits? So if we have Lewis Riddick on here, we can say in an articulate way. And I would question him just this way. So we have been New England Patriots fans since 1982. We've been season ticket holders. Right. For years and years and years. And it is abundantly clear to the entire fan base that somebody else needs to pick the groceries. Say whatever you want about Bill Belichick. I still think he should be the head coach. I still think he can coach. Um, But would a job like that and working with Bill or any type of job have enough? No, no, no. uh, Take the microphone away. Oh, you're just going to ask him. Well well done. No, let him, let him, let him control away. What? He's Belichick's not going to say that they should take personnel control away. Belichick's not going to be coaching the team or picking the players next year. If Lewis Riddick is the general manager, he's not going to have to worry about Belichick being the coach. Moving on to my third selection, if you don't mind. Vikings minus three and a half versus the Bears on Monday night. I see you shaking your head. Both teams have a bye next week. I'm shaking my head because Belichick's probably going to coach the Pats next year. Move on. Just anyway, Vikings minus three and a half versus the Bears. I don't like the number three and a half, but I love everything they're doing in Minnesota. Even though love they lost last week. the greatest head football coach of all time. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't got time for that. All right. Um, so Minnesota loses last week by one at Denver. That was tough. Certainly the Bears had a tough loss at, at Detroit. Um, but Kevin O'Connell, Josh Dobbs, I like what's going on there. You know, Minnesota is another place where I think the fans really can start to have an impact in the same way the Denver fans can. I think they're going to be amped up. You know, I don't expect it to be perfect with Josh Dobbs on Monday night, but it doesn't have to be against the Chicago Bears, you know? Certainly not. Um, Minnesota is still 6-5, and five, everything in front of them. I just think this is a much better team at home. I'll, again, lay the 3.5. Give me the Vikings, minus 3.5 Monday night versus the Bears. If you got nothing to run your mouth about, I'll move on to my fourth selection. I have nothing to say except that I absolutely love the fighting Joshua Dobbs's laying three and a half home to the Bears. Hopefully that makes our five. So my fourth selection, and I'm really happy not to have to do alternate selections. That's been a little bit me several weeks. So my fourth selection, the Texans plus one and a half at home versus the Jaguars. Why? Because. Fucking because. I love this team. I love this team. A lot of things didn't go well last week. They still found a way to win the game. 
They're home to the Cardinals. The Cardinals had a little juice coming in. I know you love when I say juice. Um, but I liked the Jaguars at home last week very much against an inferior Titans team. But I expect this to be a great game here, maybe the game of the week. I'm rooting Texans. The Texans won at Jacksonville week three, 37-17. And the Jaguars, like I said, they're great last week, but two weeks ago, stomped at home against the 49ers. The Texans are in every game. Since week three, Texans are 6-2. and two. Those two losses were each by two points. It's not going to shock me if Jacksonville gets revenge here and sort of gets a revenge win here, but I like Houston. They are the fourth-ranked offense in the entire league. I think the organization totally gets it. More consistent than their opponent here. Give me the Houston Texans plus one and a half to win and beat Jacksonville outright at home on Sunday. I'm really torn on what is a huge game for both the Jaguars and the Texans. That tank Dell for Houston is something else, man. I I do think C.J. Stroud will bounce back. But gosh, if I was forced to pick every game, I might end up on the Jacksonville side. We'll see where uh, we end up as far as the contest is concerned and that particular game. All right, next election for me is going to be the New Orleans Saints plus one at the Atlanta Falcons. So New Orleans has dominated this series of late. Sweep in the season series in 2022. They've won six of seven overall, but a lot of those games have been one score games. A lot of personnel has shifted, obviously. Both teams off last week. I think the Saints defense will be the best unit of the six units in this game. Nod to the Saints special teams as well, though. Taylor Heineke, questionable for Atlanta with a hamstring. Limited practice participant on Wednesday. Desmond Ritter may be the guy then. I don't like him against the Saints front, brother. I do not. Give me New Orleans. Catch yeah. one at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. My third, no, my fourth selection for week number 12 will be the Saints plus like one. It. How do you feel about that game? You like that? Yeah, well, you just sold me on it. I was All on right. the fence, and so uh, you might get that one in the contest. Move along. All right, final selection for me. With honorable mention to the Tennessee Titans, minus three and a half, home to the Carolina Panthers. I hope you'll give that game some consideration. I just... Gosh, I like Will Levis, and I don't particularly like what I've seen on film from Bryce Young. So Titans minus three and a half. You know, Packers plus seven and a half for me at Detroit would be a consideration. I'm certainly going to have action on all the Thanksgiving Day games. So forced to choose a side there, even though the Green Bay injury report is absolutely ugly. I do like the Packers plus seven and a half. Uh, Bengals plus one against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I do like Jake Browning. Last time I called a college football game at Husky Stadium, 2015. Washington 49, Arizona 3. Jake Browning played in that particular game. So we don't know a lot about him, but I do like him. And even though T. Higgins may not play, I do like Cincinnati. Final selection for me, though, is going to be the Cleveland Browns plus one and a half at Denver. Much better football team, Jay. The Cleveland Browns have won three straight games. They're seven and three. Longest winning streak in the NFL belongs to the Denver Broncos, though. Eagles have also won four in a row. Broncos going to make it five in a row, Jay. Five in a row against the 7-3 and three Browns. <laughs> Survey says no. The Browns are good. Now, Dorian Thompson-Robinson may not be the guy that inspires confidence for you as QB1. But this organization is well-run, Jay. They clearly understood that P.J. Walker cannot be relied upon at all to be the number one guy, nor can he be relied upon to be the backup because they actually are trying to win the Super Bowl. Like, that's what you got to understand. Like, they're trying to get into the playoffs and have that defense ride them. I know you're sort of smirking, right? They signed 38-year-old <laughs> Joe Flacco this week. And I promise you he's a better backup quarterback than P.J. Walker, right? What are they doing in New England, right? I'm not saying go sign Joe Flacco, but, like, what are you doing? Like, totally throwing away a season. Now, Kevin Stefanski, one of my favorite head coaches in the NFL, head coach of the Browns, he's only 41. He actually looks a little bit like Joe Flacco. Um, I like the Browns, though. The secondary <laughs> is a bit banged up. So I am a little bit concerned that Cortland Sutton could just go off against a banged-up Cleveland back unit. But I like the Browns to prove that they're just much closer to the AFC elite than your Denver Broncos. Give me Cleveland plus one and a half to get a big win on the road at mile high. That completes my five, five underdogs in week 12. I love it. I always love when we're going against each other head to head. You know, I'm always so tempted to talk shit to you. I've never wanted to talk more shit than I have today, but I don't really want to interrupt. I will say... Uh, you the Titans minus three and a half. I totally agree. That was an alternate selection. You're almost pushing me to want to move that into my five. Before I make my fifth selection, I want to quickly touch on these Thanksgiving games. So neither one of us played the Lions Packers game. You would lean Packers, as you just said, plus seven and a half. Correct? Yes. Okay. 
Um, and so, uh, and then that final game, you didn't touch on this one. 49ers minus seven and a half at Seahawks. Did you touch on this game? Gosh, forced to choose, I would play San Francisco, but I think you get a big effort out of Seattle after what happened last week. Don't like the game. Okay. Yeah, I want to have... Yeah, hmm, I'm going to leave my fifth selection as is. I'm not going to get cute with it. I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys minus 12 and a half versus the Commanders. No extra time for the Cowboys. Seahawks coming in next Thursday. Um, Commanders have the worst turnover differential in the whole league. Really not a good statistic when you're playing at Dallas on Thanksgiving. Um, So they lose outright at home, right, to the Giants last week. Nine and a half point favorite. I understand they outgained him. I would have fired Ron Rivera. I guess they're going to let him, I get whatever, get in his riverboat at the end of the season, whatever. He can take Jack Del Del Rio with him, all right? Um, But the new ownership in Washington, they'll get their man. Just please trade for Bill Belichick, okay? Please trade for Bill Belichick. Check, give us a little pick coming back. Lewis Riddick will make a nice selection. We'll be all right. So, uh, as I said, I think three picks for Sam Howell last week. Um, I think Sam Howell needs to be slinging it to be successful and effective. Oh, slinging I think he Sam, needs to, right? Like slinging exactly. Sam. And I just and I and I think doing that in Dallas, it's going to be troublesome. Um, Dak Prescott this season, nineteen touchdowns, six interceptions on the year. That's that makes a big difference for that team in Dallas last year. The entire year, twenty three touchdowns, fifteen picks. I think Dallas is going to want to put on a show. We both loved them last week. They eat up bad teams. I love them again. They're one of the best complete football teams out there. I, for the commanders, after coughing that up at home, I just don't see them having much juice. I think that's the blowout on the board tomorrow. Those other two games, both home favorites, Lions, and or excuse me, 49ers on the road, but both seven and a half. Those scared me a little bit. So my final selection, Cowboys minus 12 and a half versus the commanders. Yeah, certainly don't want a commander's ticket on Thanksgiving Day. But it's just hard, right? You got to have such a big lead to avoid a backdoor cover. But yeah, I think uh, that could have been uh, a blowout that you identified there. We shall see. Find out tomorrow. And my assumption, yeah, my assumption will be we are probably not going to play any of the Thanksgiving games in the Super Contest. It doesn't feel as though either one of us has a strong enough conviction to make all five of our selections today. Yeah, you got to anyway, go We appreciate sure that, that chicken's moist. You can't be worried about the contest, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Did they get the cranberry sauce you like out of the can? I don't know, man. Hope so. I don't know. We're Hope on the so. road. It's a road you have problems. You know, no not problems. a vacation. It's a trip. Not a vacation. Yeah, with kids. Yeah, with kids, it's not a vacation. It's a trip. Week 12 in the NFL. We appreciate you all being with us on Annex Squared. Check out johnannick.com. 25% off all Annick and Florian podcast merch through Sunday for Black Friday. Well, maybe we'll take it through Cyber Monday. Why not? Um. Anyway. Uh, Annex Square design is fire. We just got to upload it. We appreciate y'all being with us at the helm, as usual. The great, talented Cody Bone Marrow. For my identical twin brother, John Annick, my name is Jason Annick. We will see you next week for week 13 on Annex Squared. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the games. Have a good day.